Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King and today I'm going to be giving you part 4 of what if Naruto became the Shadow of Kanuha. Remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual, share this to all of your friends in your social media platform, and also guys, go ahead and check out the brand new episode over in Anime King 2 of what if Naruto was abandoned and awakened a Kikinkai and enjoyed that guys. And I also post a brand new episode of Anime King 3 of what if Naruto had the deadliest bloodline so go ahead and check out that and enjoy guys and remember if you're new to go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the Anime King family and thank you for all of your help and your support and yeah without further ado what is to begin this new episode start the intro So the last time we left off, the group came back to Kanoha as I will tell them that you're all dismissed as he would go and report to the Hokage. As Naruto stood there at the entrance, as his mind was being plagued by the thoughts of what happened that night, of the things that he did, as he remembered completely plundering that man in his kunai over and over again, as Ino went towards her share apartment with Sakura, as Sakura noticed something was wrong but Ino couldn't really talk about it, but still. She asked her if she has seen Naruto lately. As Sakura told her once in a while, they start getting into a conversation as Ino realized that the feelings that she had for Sasuke by then was nothing compared to what Sakura had. Shikamaru was, well, he was starting to date the San Kunoichi. And Ino liked Shikamaru. She always believed that he was the one that she was going to end up with. She also noticed something as they talked about Naruto. Sakura had feelings for him. But she would never go on them. Naruto didn't know how to react when you show him feelings. Ever since the pain battle, Hinata was being avoided by him. And he didn't well know how to react. As Hinata had seemingly given up. As Ino felt sorry for her. As Hinata had always said a thing for Naruto. But he didn't say anything to her after the pain battle. But it seems like he just didn't know how to react and talk about it. It was strange. So that is why Sakura never act on anything. Naruto was given time off, so was every Anvus after their strenuous mission, so that he did not go insane. As Naruto was with Snowy in his bed, because he wasn't going out or doing anything, when Snelly called him, she had an important mission for him as she was apologizing for taking him off. He's resting so soon but she had something only he could do, as he was fast enough to get there. There was a civil war going on with the south of the hidden stone and the hidden stone as a genuine team was sent out there and Snad they wanted Naruto to go and help them as she would be sending that team but he was only fast enough to get there before anything happened as Naruto made his way off without hesitating he disguised himself as one of the miners as he entered as he made his way as he found one of the girls just like the girl from the Berme clan as the girl was trembling in fright when she saw him but Naruto showed his headband he was a Kanoha ninja so there was nothing for to worry about. But he couldn't take off his mask off his face right now. She ended up trusting him as a great clone to guide her out of here. Her friends though as he went there. Naruto lost it when he saw. The kids dead. The man they had killed the kids saying that they were still ninjas. As Naruto brutalized everyone in there. He turned into the monster itself as he slaughtered everyone. When he came back to Kanoha as he reported Snedi. She was shot by the news. As Naruto had completely eviscerated all the forces there. He made his way towards the hospital as he saw the girl. As she was recovering, she had to tell the parents of her friends that they got slaughtered out there. And it was terrible as she cried. To his surprise, the girl came to find him. Her name was Moshe. There was also the girl in Naruto's apartment. Her brother left her here. Knowing that this was the best place that she would be kept safe. As Naruto was there with her as Moshe introduced herself as she thanked him, she couldn't believe that it was Naruto the hero who had saved her. She promised that she wouldn't tell anyone that he was in Anfu. When Naruto friend then came in as he was in a bad state, he, he was running with drugs. It got taken away by another gang. 
and he got beat up really bad. He was in a bad state as Naruto brought him to the hospital. As Sakura looked over him. As Naruto brought Moshi, Ashino came for her. As he brought her home. As Ashino thanked Naruto, the entire Aberme clan thanked him for bringing her back safe. As Naruto made his way back home. While that was going on, the real Naruto was currently eviscerating again. As a man was pleading for Naruto not to kill him, that he would give him anything he wanted, but the last thing the gang leader saw was a crow mass. And he was gone. So yeah guys, those base guys were left off you guys again. Switch your cross and place check for yourself. So this again this new episode. Kanoha Hospital held the most burned victim. Well, they were in the Fire Nation. Soccer release. A sigh of relief. As she looked down towards her patient that she saved. She might have saved his life, but he would never be the same again. His skin was badly burned. As she exited the emergency room. As Naruto was sitting there as usual. If he wasn't on a mission, he would always be here around this time. Hey, Sakura, wanna grab some lunch? I'm sorry, Naruto, she said. I'm extremely busy. She watched as his shoulders collapse. But you can accompany me on a errand I have to run, she said. His face brightened. Let me go change, she said. As Sakura made her way, she knew that that Naruto was just a clone, for our parents' sake. But she felt bad of always turning him down. As she then came back, ready, Naruto asked. She smiled as they made their way, as they stepped to the hospital. So, how have you been, she asked. Not bad, he said. I have plenty of time to train every day. Is that safe, she asked as she glanced around. What if you poofed out of chakra, because you're training so hard? I have enough chakra, he said, the smile. But what if you need that chakra in a mission? That's dangerous. It doesn't matter how much chakra that Naruto had, it would be dangerous for him. It's fine, he said, the chakra. As they walked, she tried to weigh the consequences of splitting chakra over long distances. It just wasn't safe. That meant where the real Naruto was, he might be working at 50%. She turned around to scold him, but he was rather close to her as she turned. Hey, are those bags under your eyes? The impact when he hit the ground created a sizable crater as she had punched him. As he pulled himself out of the crater, I was just saying that you look tired, he said. She huffed as she crossed her arms. That better be what you meant, she said. She resisted the temptation of running a test on how much of her punches his clone could contain. Sorry about that, he said. I might be a bit tired, she said to him. I've been working on this case with the medical unit that had everyone stump. Hmm? What happened, he asked. Just some dead thugs, Shocker said. But they've been trying to find evidence for the assailant. But it's been a brick wall. We know that it was a ninja. The weapon used was a kunai. And the cuts are too clean for it to be a civilian. We just don't know anything else, I swear. The job was so precise. The Anvus might even be jealous. I told you that we should have left more blood. Sakura turned. As she saw Naruto with an old woman. He was shouting at her in a happy tone until she turned over her back to him. Thank you, the old woman said. As Naruto held her groceries. No problem, said Naruto. Sakura sighed, just when she thought that she had a companion no one to listen to her. Naruto's short attention span, strike again. As she sighed in defeat and caught up to him at the melon stand. You should buy some stuff too, she said to him. After all, you should eat other things than ramen. Or perhaps, warm fresh meat, the fox said. There's nothing wrong with ramen, said Naruto. And besides that, he was broke. A ninja need to maintain a balanced diet. She grabbed the melon and shoved it right into his face. The old woman chuckled. You two look so cute together. They came to a pause, and then an awkward blush. Oh, we're not together, Sakura said. Why not? He's a hero of the village, the old woman said. As she winked and weighed two of the melons in her hand, an image suddenly flashed into his mind. Pink hair, a naked body, and two melons. Damn it! Stop that, said Naruto as he yelled at the Kyube. Let's go kill something, preferably a pinkier thing. Naruto took a deep breath as he counted backwards from 10. Sakura had turned as she hid her disappointment from the lack of Naruto's response. How much do I owe you for the melon, said Naruto. Nonsense, the man said. Here, have another. Anything for the village hero. As Naruto was looking at the fruit, the perplexed look. She elbowed him. What's wrong with you? Take it and say thanks. But, as he looked towards the melon, it was completely fine. It was not molding or anything. She punched him in the arm. Stop being rude, she said. He turned to the merchant. Sorry about that. Thank you, he said. As he gave a quick bow. As Sakura jerked him along towards the next stall where the woman walked off to. You can have it, said Naruto. Naruto, I don't know what's wrong with you, she said that sigh. It's poison, said Grandma. It's poison, said Naruto. What? Sakura yelled. It might be poison, said Naruto. You're the best medicine I know. You can figure it out. 
This isn't the first time that she notices a strange paranoia. Naruto, it's not poison. Why would the villagers want to poison you? He thought the answer to that was obvious. Moments later, why are we going to be in Zaka, said Naruto. I have to talk to Hannah about some research I'm doing, said Tucker. I'm working on a pill that will hopefully slow down the process of hemorrhaging. As she started to go on about her medical work, she seemed rather happy about it. Whoa, said Naruto. That's awesome. I have no idea what you just said, but it sounds awesome. She rolled her eyes, but yet she smiled. It wouldn't be amazing until she actually succeeded, but she took the compliment nevertheless. The bell on the door chimed as they walked in to the veterinary office. It was a slow day. The place was empty. When they approached, they saw Kiba sleeping on top of the main counter. When they came inside, several barks could be heard as several dogs that were being kept by the fence start to bark after them. Yo, Kiba. Kiba flipped off the counter. If you're looking for my sister, she's sick today. But if it is medicine you want, I can get it for you. As Naruto laughed, never thought I would see you as a vet, he said. Kiba realized who he was talking to. As his eyes snapped towards Naruto as he growled, Naruto looked bewildered. As he looked towards Kiba, um, is there something going on between you two? Sakura said. My problem? It isn't my problem, said Kiba. As he ignored Naruto's presence being there. As he turned towards Sakura, well, if he could ignore him, Naruto could do the same thing. As Naruto folded his arms and ignored Kiba. Sakura didn't know what was going on. She figured it was just them being boys. I'm sorry, she said. I just came to ask Anna a question. About a certain kind of medicine. Which one, Kiba asked. It's an injection used as a type of pain reliever, she said. Yeah, I know the one, said Kiba. Do you happen to know its content and how safe it is for human consumption? Sakura asked. The drug that she was talking about was barely used nowadays. As it was a new one in favor. But the chemical makeup of that drug was the one that she was looking for. Kiba scoffed at that. If a human drink that stuff, they will have bloody diarrhea for at least a week. If you want to know what's in it, Kiba started to list off the various ingredients. But Naruto drone off as he started to wander around the place. As the barks of dogs and puppies wagging their tails. He leaned over the counter as he saw Akamaru as he was asleep. There were so many puppies, all different breeds and different colors. Kiba was currently writing down everything that he knew about the drug. There are so many dogs here, said Naruto. Strays, Kiba said. The way he said the word, it was like he was calling Naruto an idiot for not knowing. Naruto ignored Kiba's strange behavior. He then realized that he has never seen a stray dog in Konoha before. Even the orphan dogs had a home, but the orphan children did not. How do you take care of all of them, said Naruto. A small puppy rubbed against Kiba's leg with a ball in his mouth. As Kiba took it and threw it over his shoulder, a lot more puppies followed the other one and ran down the corridor. As Kiba locked eyes with Naruto, the way Kiba looked at him, it was like he wanted to beat the crap out of him for some reason. He replied that snarl, usually. Other family members helped out when they're not on missions. It costs a lot to keep them up but we're funded by Daimyo's wife. She's been a patron of ours for years because she brings in her cat all the time. Before Naruto could ask another question, Sakura spoke, Hey Kiba, would you know how the medicine is actually made? Some of these ingredients are rather delicate, she said. Yes, yeah, said Kiba as he picked up the ball and threw it again. As he started explaining to Sakura, Wow, Kiba, I'm impressed, said Sakura. I thought only your sister would know this stuff. Under that mane of yours, you actually know what you're talking about. Hannah is the one that practically raised me, Kiba said. And I'm the next clan head, he said. Sakura, not being a part of the clan herself, did not know the rules. I know I don't have a prescription, but I was hoping to get a sample of that medicine. I was hoping to work on a human version of it. Alright, come back tomorrow and I'll have it ready for you. I would have it ready today, but Hannah is still sick. And I got to get some training in. Hmm. What are you training for? said Naruto. Joining the exam, said Kiba. I have to pass in order to succeed my mother's gun head. He then smirked. Hey, have any free time next week? He asked. I could use a good training partner. Well, said Naruto. It wouldn't take me in time to wipe the floor with you. You want to bet, said Kiba. We didn't come here to fight, Sakura said. You can hit on each other all you like later. Hmm. Not like he had a chance, said Kiba as he folded his arms. Sakura sighed, come on, she said, she was about to drag Naruto out. Oh, she wanted to inquire how Hinata was doing. But before she could, why the hell are you not training, that voice yelled. I can't. Hana is sick today, Kiba yelled back. What? Was that your mom? Said Sakura. She has never met his mom up close before. Kiba shrugged. Just got in from a mission. Hana, wake your ass up. Mom. What the hell is that? Is that a rush? Mom, we have visitors, Kiba yell. Visitors, my ass, stop flirting and get back to training. Ignore her, said Kiba. So least like your father, she yelled back. How the hell would I know, Kiba said in anger. 
I don't remember my father. Oh, is that my fault? She yelled back. Mom, don't tell me you're fighting over this again. Shut up, Hannah. Both of them yelled at the same time. And where were you? I was providing food for the clan. The voice started to get louder and louder as Tasumi came inside and she grabbed Kiba. At least I came back home, she yelled at him, even though they were directly in front of each other. If you want to do the same, I suggest you get the training now. Kiba had always promised that he would make it back home. But Tasumi knew that there was a lot of sacrifice in this world. She was a single woman raising two kids when they were young and a business and the Ninkins and not to mention a clan that was almost decimated by the Kaiba's attack. She had no choice but to accept missions after missions to simply have enough. It was only when they were old enough to start bringing their own income when she didn't have to take so much missions. She just wished that Kiba was strong enough so he could always make it back home. Sorry mom said Kiba as the argument dissolved rather quickly. Tesumi then turned towards the pink head. And who the hell are you? Sakura turned as she realized that Naruto had abandoned her. All alone Kiba's mom, the scariest woman in Konoha. Meanwhile, Naruto had to add flair. If Sinadi found out that he had replaced himself with this clone to go and have lunch with Sakura, she would have punched him across Hokage's monument and he had left his post. He was several seconds before about to fly. As he arrived in the office, I have a mission for the four of you. A search and rescue, said Sinadi. Time skip, Crow had his orders. The Hokage wanted them dead and he had to put his trust in her. He watched the two guards that were guarding the entrance. The Kayubi was growling in anticipation as he resisted the urge to act before the signal was given. An explosion went off the signal. The missing names stumbled as they looked at each other in confusion on what was going on. They didn't see something flashing towards them, creating claws out of chakra. The claws struck down both of his targets as they fell dead. Then Crow made his way, going into the darkness of the underground base. He crawled along the shadows of the ceiling as he picked off his targets one by one, not giving into the bloodlust. He had to be subtle about this. He then received the message in his ear. Butterfly, have successfully secured the hostages. Commence the act two. I will cover a butterfly. Crow, squid, clear the base. The lights along the ceiling flashed as chaos went off in the base. As the lights started to go off, panic started to set in. As Crow was on top of the ceiling, as the four shinobis ran around, they saw the red light and they saw the unruh mass. The four ninjas stepped back in fear as Crow shot towards them. They regained their bearings as they threw kunais. He deflected them with his katana. As he reached the first shinobi before he could flash through hand signs. As Crow drove the katana right to the man's chest, he pulled it out and threw the man to the side. A freezy breath then came right towards him as he created a rasengan and smashed it right into it. As he then turned and swung his katana as he sliced right through the ninja's throat. Blood spray all over the hall as the torso fell first. The other two looked on in fear as one of them got cut down. As the last one rushed up against the wall realized that he was surrounded, as it was the same person. As the man looked towards him as he had on the leaf headband with a slash across it. I was just trying to help them, he said. And I'm just doing my job, said Crow. As he swung his blade, as he heard more footsteps coming towards him. As he got a whiff of the blood, the bloodlust taking over. Taking down, the ninja said. As his eyes snap and change, as he launched himself towards them. Crow, Crow, Naruto, as Naruto finally snapped out of it, he looked around as he saw Squid a distance away from him in a defensive posture. Naruto was about to ask what was wrong, but as he tried to speak he found something warm and mushy in his mouth. It tasted so much better than ramen as he swallowed it. He tried to make sense of the situation as he took in his around it. His breath stopped instantly as his heart started to beat so fast he was afraid that it might pop out of his chest. As he looked across the body that was lying across his knees, the shirt was ripped open and the bones, the bones of his ribs were jetting out of him. His chest was ripped apart so badly, like a wild animal had went to town on him. Naruto and trembled. As he looked at them, they were covered in blood. It was good, wasn't it, said the fox. Naruto threw himself back to the opposite wall as he started to vomit up a pool of blood. He started to vomit up the flesh. What the hell did he do? As Naruto was coughing violently. As there was nothing else to cough out. His eyes were wide. As he just looked at the ground. When he felt someone crouch on beside him. Do you eat them to make sure they stay dead? Asked Sai. Trying to understand. As Naruto looked up at Sai. He would look so calm. Well, why aren't you afraid? 
en route when a body had to be disposed of quickly and there was no other option for agents that weren't proficient in fire jutsu and had no fire bombs. They had to eat the body to leave no evidence. Naruto looked at Sai, completely shocked. Sai struck as he sat beside Naruto and pulled at the scroll. He drew several ink rats as he jumped up and scoured the hallways. The rats started to take care of the corpse by eating it like he was nothing. They sat in silence until there was nothing left but pristine, white bones. You, you won't tell anyone about this, won't you? said Naruto. I was ordered to kill and I did, said Sai. They said nothing about reporting on your strange mannerism. Naruto wondered how messed up Sai had to be to describe eating someone as a strange mannerism. Crow. Squid. Shikamaru's voice came over the radio. Were there any complications? No, said Sai. We will be at the rendezvous point shortly. Hurry up, said Shikamaru. The hostages are troublesome. Sai walked over and picked up Naruto's mask. Hey. As he tossed at Naruto, who caught it. As Naruto gave him a firm nod. As Naruto placed back on his mask. Moments later. What were you thinking, said Shikamaru? I told you to only clear out your area. I thought. The point was to kill everyone, said Naruto. Shikamaru asked him to report what happened. Naruto had skipped many parts about the part of him ripping to someone's flesh. But he was still in trouble because he went over his boundaries. That's not the point. I need you to follow orders. Sometime. There are reasons why I want you in certain places. Your location is really important for my backup plans. Sorry, said Naruto. I won't do it again. Please don't hear my friend. And it would be rather troublesome to report you on disobedience. There's a lake a few miles away from here. Go get clean up. I don't need you to scare the daimyo's great nephew. As Naruto made his way towards the lake, he was more than happy to get clean up. As he tore off his previous uniform and burned it. After washing the blood off his skin as much as he could in his hair, he went into his storage room and pulled out a new uniform. He gurgled some water, he even ate a few leaf, but the taste was still in his mouth. He was disgusted at himself. As he returned back to camp, the Anvil agents had settled down. For the comfort of their guests, only one tent was erected. Naruto passed Shikamaru who was sitting on a rock. Sai was stirring a cooking pot above the fire. Ino was sitting on a log. A small chubby man looked up at Naruto's rival. His clothing looked rather expensive but now it was torn and all dirty. His hair looked like it was tied up in a bun, but it was now down towards his shoulders. So you must be the other ninja that saved me. I am Tekido, Yamamoto, the Fire Lord, great nephew. The man said in a smug tone. I am Crow, said Naruto. But his words bounced off the man's ears as he turned to squid. Tekido clapped his hands. Are you done, Ninja Vesla? he asked. I am absolutely starving. Yes, your lordship, said Sai, with a fake smile. As he poured the broth and handed it to Tekido, in a bowl. As he placed a hand around Ino's waist. I am so desperately tired, he said. As he looked towards Naruto, I ordered you to rub my feet. Naruto blinked in confusion and surprise. What? Rub my feet, the man said. No, said Naruto. Naruto, Ino voice came in his head. We don't have a choice. Excuse me, what did you say? The man asked in shock that one of his subjects would defy him. All he had to do was say one word to his uncle and Kanoha would lose all of his economical support. As Naruto gritted his teeth in frustration. No, I mean, I won't just do your feet. I'll do your shoulders as well. Of course, the man said in a smug smile. He was using it in his way after all. As Naruto sat down, his hand ripping to the earth. This was just beyond stupid. Tekiko ate his dinner. What do you think of the current political climate, Ino asked. Try to keep the man in the conversation and take his eyes off her chest. I don't see why the peasants deserve a lax on their taxes, Tekiko said. They wouldn't be starving if they weren't so lazy. The taxes are for their own benefit. It motivated them to work. As Naruto was getting crazy, the more men go on and the more he heard this man talk. You could kill him, you know. As Naruto looked up towards the man's neck, think about it. What would happen if this guy became next daimyo? You would be doing the world a big favor if you just kill him right now. For once it gave me the point that Naruto wasn't against, then we could eat all the fat off his body. No, said Naruto. As his mind snapped back to focus, I'm not gonna kill him. Take he would then finish his bowl as he stretched. He clapped, but no one understood what that meant. He then looked at Naruto and looked at the bowl. As Naruto slowly took it, it's time I retire for the night. He then looked at Ino. Congratulations. I have bestowed the privilege upon you to be my bed warmer for the night, he said. At that, Naruto snapped, but he found himself unable to move. A pleasure, said Ino. As the man smiled, as Naruto realized that he was being held by Shikamaru's shadow. What are you doing, Shikamaru? Crow. There's nothing that we can do. It's politics. Screw politics, said Naruto. He can't do that to Ino, we're not his slaves. Look, I don't like them better, but if that man came to your arm, 
it could start a civil war. I can't just stand here and let you take advantage of her. Release me, said Naruto. He could overpoach Komaru Jutsu quickly and get to that guy and rip him to shreds. As Shikamaru would not release him, as Naruto started to gather his chakra, then Ian would step out of the tent. As Naruto blinked, that was quick. Did you really? Ino blinked. He think that we did, said Ino. Owl, aren't we supposed to be going over the second phase of the plan? Right, said Shikamaru. As Owl started to explain, the second phase. We have to deliver to Kiko, to Daimyo. But in the Daimyo's presence, no mass are allowed. It has already been decided true that you will be the one to deliver our escort. Why me, said Naruto. Shikamaru said what should have been obvious. You're the great Uzumaki Naruto. The next morning, Takiko wake up from the best nap he has ever had in a long while. After being kidnapped and asked for a ransom, well, he deserved it, as he exited the only tent and he found the blonde here, blue eye man outside. He jumped up in fright, but Takiko then saw the headband with the leaf insignia. Good morning, said Naruto. One of your envoy guards sent for me last night. I will be your escort the rest of the week. Takiko Brighton, rightfully honored that Kanoha would send him a more appropriate entourage. After all those masses, they were just unsettling. You have the honor of escorting Takiko Yamoto, the great nephew of the Fire Daimyo. An honor, said Naruto Dabao. Uzumaki Naruto. Takiko wrapped his memory for that name. He swore that he heard it before. The thought soon left him as the other masked ninjas had finished, clearing the campsite and ready to depart. He longed to return home to the comfort of his palace. By the middle of the day they arrived, as the palace was there, but there were some people outside that were huddled up against a wall. Mothers held children against their chest feeding them, and they were really skinny. Children watched the entourage as they passed. None of the peasants near the ninjas, as they just stayed there looking hopeless and defeated. One of them, though, was strong enough to crawl forward as he touched Tekiko's ropes. Please, sir, have mercy on us. Tekiko kicked him right in the face. Disgusting. Uzumaki, kill this peasant for touching me with this felt. Seriously, said Naruto. Of course. Kill this thing, Tekiko said. Naruto looked at the man that was lying in the road. Too weak to even pull himself up. No, said Naruto. Do what I say or I will see to it that Kanoha population meet an even worse fate. As Naruto was past the point of being annoyed. The place was cool one moment the next. Everything started to get hot and hotter and hotter. Shikamaru was conflicted. He won't tell Naruto to stand down. The logical part in his brain was telling him to move to tell Naruto to stand down. But the rest of Shikamaru wanted Naruto to tear this fat bastard into two. For the first time, Ino was glad that Naruto did not care for the rules. It was Sai that did the act. He pulled his blade and sliced the man's head clean off. As Naruto anger dropped, as he heard the woman cried out as she ran over and collapsed right on top of the man's body with the baby in her hand. With trembling legs, Tekigo stepped away from Naruto in fright. His eyes had glow red and his teeth had turned so sharp like a predator. Tekigo was afraid of Naruto. As Sai returned back to his post as he walked towards the daimyo's gate. When they entered, Naruto saw inside the walls everything was wonderful. Two ninjas were in the carp that marked them as one of the twelve guardian ninjas stopped him. Password. Password? Tekiko Huff. Do you not recognize me? I am the Daimyo great nephew. Tekiko, he said. The bird has flown to Chikamaru, cutting off the man. The guards nodded. You may enter, but no masks or weapons. Uzumaki Naruto has been chosen to deliver the Daimyo's nephew. As Naruto pulled off his weapons and handed him to Chikamaru. Don't be too troublesome, Chikamaru whispered in his ear. Once they were inside, Naruto's breath was stolen from him. As he looked at the statues that were perfectly decorated right in the corners, they were golden. He has never seen things like this before. They were stopped in front of a court door. Before you can enter, one of the guards said, we need to make sure you're not smuggling in any weapons. One of the guardian ninja turned to Naruto and pointed to a side room. He was escorted inside. As the door was closed, I'm sorry Mr. Uzumaki, but I'm gonna need you to strip. You need me to watch the Naruto. Luckily, Kanoha had to be up gun to bypass all these treacheries, but everyone else had the old-fashioned rules to go by. Rules are rules, no matter who you are. The rules are that. Naruto grumbled in anger as he pulled off his shirt and pants. Your boxers as well. Who the hell am I gonna add a weapon in my boxers? It's been an added security. After, the terrorist known as Deira had a mass supply of his bombs distributed through the underground after his death. If you want to see the daimyo, you got no choice. 
I still don't remember why the hell did you want to see Daimyo again. Oh yeah, the Hokage gave them strict instructions. The mission was not finished until they deliver. The man straight to the Daimyo. As Naruto pulled off his boxers, grumbling the entire time. The ninja checked through all of his clothing. Clear. I'm gonna need you to open your mouth. For what? You could be smuggling something in your teeth or on your tongue. As Naruto felt extremely uncomfortable, the man went through his mouth and nose while he was in the nude. Clear. As the man put on some gloves. I really hate this part of the job. But I'm gonna need you to bend over. Wait, what? It won't take long, the man said. As Naruto think of the various ways to knock the man out without making it seem like it was a act of war or something like that. Hey, I'll to help you, said Naruto. Huh, you're on your own, kid. The fox had a lot to say when he did not use advice, but now he was quiet. Can't we just overlook his part, said Naruto. The guardian thought for a while. How much money you got? None, said Naruto. Then no, the man said. As Naruto clenched his fist as he turned, it would be easier if you relax. Screw your relax, said Naruto. The man shook his head. He went through this four times a day. When the man was done, Naruto got his clothes clear. As Naruto was angry, flushed the embarrassment and angry. I really am sorry. And I'm really glad that you didn't tear my head off or something like that. As the man had his back turned to give Naruto some privacy to put on his clothes. Despite doing something just much, much worse. I really do respect what you did for this country. As Naruto walked out angrily. I'm in, said Kurama. Shut the hell up, said Naruto. As the grand door opened, as Tekiko and Naruto enter, Tekiko Yamamoto, our lordship, great nephew, and twelfth descendant, as Tekiko walked in the room, as someone was introducing them, escorted by the fox sage and great war hero, Naruto Uzumaki. As Snavi couldn't refer to him as a genin, he was one of the strongest ninja of Kanoha after all, so she gave him the same title as a sage, and she put fox as a moniker. To remind everyone of Konoha's greatest strength, it was all political, but it was near the first time hearing of this as he nearly tripped over himself. Nobles were all over as they murmured, as Naruto saw a throne that could rival the Emperor. As the thing was large, as Naruto had his sense to bow, as he appeared from the fire daimyo, Great uncle, I am home, Tekiko said. Good, good. There was a veil there so Naruto could not see the person behind it. I am glad that you are safe. One of the guards of daimyo leaned over towards the daimyo. Behind the veil. Tekiko, your lordship. Your fat nephew. He reminded the daimyo. Ah, yes, yes, Tekiko. I'm glad that you are home. Tekiko, ego deflated. As Naruto smiled at that. I'll show you, fat, he said as he stormed off into the crowd. Poor thing must be tired. Send some of the concubines to take care of him. Yes, your lordship. So this is the one that defeated that evil ninja. As a chocolate came from the curtain. The curtain started to shuffle. Your lordship. That is not advisable. But I want to see the hero that saved us all. As Naruto blinked as he was just an old man. Now's our chance. You can go ahead and kill him. As Naruto ignored the fox. He's still just a young boy, the daimyo said. Fox Sage, I have a proposition for you. How would you like to be on my esteem? Twelve ninja guardians. As Naruto looked at the man. A million thoughts went through his mind at once. He couldn't possibly leave Kanuha. His friends were there, the orphans. Had no one else to turn to. And there was Granny Snavi. Even though he was starting to hate Anvil, he still wants to protect Konoha. I... Yes, the Daimyo said. Konoha still needs me, said Naruto. Almost everyone in the room held their breaths. Later did Naruto know no one. No one ever said no to the Daimyo. Everyone watched the man's expression, waiting. Like lightning was gonna strike out of nowhere. The man sat back with a pout. Oh well, he said. But if you ever change your mind, there will always be a position for you here. I am grateful for the consideration, your lordship, said Naruto. Trying his best not to mess everything up. You're dismissed. I look forward to hear more of your exploits. When the doors closed, Naruto was quite glad to get the hell out of there. Time skip a clone that was transformed. Arrive at the crying woman. Do you need help burying him? My husband, the woman said. Here, let me help. The other peasants were surprised. As they saw Naruto picked up the corpse and helped the woman. As he brought the corpse to the side of the road. He was just trying to feed this woman, said as Naruto dig the grave. As Naruto looked at the hundreds of starving faces, he could not save any of them. Because he was so used to being a hero. He didn't have any money, he didn't have any resource to give them a home, and not to mention he needed medical care as well. Notice a rash, and the markings over them, but he didn't have it. I don't have any money, but I do have some food, said Naruto as he pulled out a sprue. He can seal all the ramen cup. If we can make a fire, I can make it for you. The woman looked up at him as her eyes were sparkling, like she was looking at an angel. She started to cry as Naruto packed on her back, awkwardly. As Naruto got to cooking the ramen, as it was finished, the others were attracted by the smell. The parents insisted that the kids eat first. As Naruto passed out the ramen, 
What happened? How did you all get here? said Naruto. As he turned towards the woman, Ino knew her name. Her name was Haruko. She sniffed and wiped her face to her trembling arms. When the daimyo raises taxes, we did not have enough money to buy seeds to grow our crops. In order to do so, we had to borrow. The interest rates kept on going up until we were all in debt and then we all lost our homes. Even the money my son sent us wasn't enough. But our dads said that they were going to do something about it. One of the children said, as all the adults had a sad look on their faces when the children said that, Haruko shook her head. Some of them had an idea that if they gather up enough money, they could hire a few ninjas to adduck Daimyo's nephew. They weren't going to hurt him. It was just for the ransom. Just enough money to feed their families. Some of the ninjas that were related to many of the people out here went rogue from their village because they could not watch as they fight for their home and their people starve. It was so stupid they should have stayed in their villages. At least they still had something to eat. At least they would still be alive. Manshinshikan, he would still be alive. They all knew what happened when they saw the daimyo's nephew came in towards the gate. That meant they had failed. As Naruto then remember, I'm sorry, I won't try to help them. The missing nin said to him, as it all made sense now, as he looked towards the woman, I, I'm sorry, said Naruto. She looked towards him confused, as she didn't understand why he was apologizing. As he poofed away, they were surprised by him poofing away, but the place got cold as the chill of the winter was coming. Meanwhile, Owl had returned back. It went better than expected, said Snad with a smirk. She had gotten a letter. The daimyo was so impressed by Naruto. He requests Naruto in all of his future missions. It will strengthen Konoha and the income. She hadn't expected Daimyo to ask Naruto into his Guardian 12. But it was great that Naruto turned it down. Konoha needed Naruto. Sending Naruto in was a good move. It was perfect to have your successor meet the Fire Daimyo. Snaddy smile at this rate, Konoha will be back and running at full capacity in no time. Meanwhile, with Naruto, he felt sick, not physically, but emotionally. As he was walking down towards his apartment, as he had his hands in his pockets. I'll give you a discount, Mako teased from the corner but Naruto simply walked past. When he got back there was no unexpected visitors. The apartment was empty as he went to the bathroom. As the warm water rushed down on him, as he hit his head against the shower wall. He didn't know if he could do this anymore. His mind was being overloaded. His mental wall was starting to crack, piece by piece. He didn't know what kept him going. Perhaps it was the mental wall he built up so far that he has been holding up since he was younger when people spat, beat on him, hated him, glared at him, cursed at him. He just knew that he had to keep going, somehow, somehow, some way things would get better. He pulled himself from the shower and put on some pants. When he arrived he saw Mako on the couch, but he wasn't a mood to leave with her teasing. He went into his bedroom and closed the door. He barely got sleep in his bed recently, as he just looked at the ceiling. The door opened and closed. As Mako yelled as a cone and pressed up against her throat, sorry, said Naruto. After all the lessons that Snake had teach him, it was instinct by this point. Believe it or not, you're not the first client to draw a kunai and me. Why are you here, said Naruto. She made her intentions known as she pressed her lips against his. As she pressed her body against his as well. As Naruto got lost in the feeling, as the feeling was getting too much as he flipped her over, Naruto said, Nico, you're hurting me, she said. As the fox drove Naruto lust, be blood or sexually. Naruto please Miko said as he was biting her neck. As Naruto looked down, Miko was afraid. Well, his fangs were protruding from his mouth and he looked terrified and his eyes were red. As Naruto jumped away, seeing her so scared, Miko rushed towards the other side of the bed. Everyone knew that Naruto the Kaiba seal inside of him and the way he just acted, it was more demonic than human. She grabbed her shirt and she put it on back quickly. Everyone knew when a ninja finished their mission was the time that they need comfort the most. And it was when they just got paid as well. As Miko quickly left, as Naruto sat there, does this mean that he could never be with a woman because this loss, this instinct would took over? Well, I'm not going anywhere. As Naruto appeared in his mindscape, as the gates came down and smashed on the Kayubi so hard, it was like it was gonna suffocate him. It pinned him down to the ground. The fox looked at him and snarled, like to say, Do you think this will subdue me? Because he could not talk. As Naruto slammed another gate down on him. Finally, his head was silent. As Naruto woke up the next morning, the only thing that got him going was that he had a sparring match with Kiba today. As he placed on that usual fate mask 
After all, the hero of Kanoha can't go around being all depressed. Kanoha would panic. Meanwhile, Kiba, what are we waiting for? Inata asked. As she was tempted to use her Miyakan to ruin the surprise. Just Shino, Kiba said. I want to surprise you with a reunion of some sort. With everything that you're going through. She smiled. That's sweet, Kiba. But Shino is on a mission, she said. Kiba realized that he was caught. As Kiba then sniffed. As he smelled it coming. He's coming. Hey Kiba, said Naruto as he arrived. You better be ready, because I'm about to kick your... Naruto paused. As he came face to face with her, since the war, not much has changed about her. She still wore the same oversized jacket. Her face still went red when she saw him, as she poked her fingers together. But it was what he saw on her forehead that confused him. She had used her headband to tie her hair back. And the seal on her forehead that was a cage bird seal. What, what happened, said Naruto. She couldn't find her voice. Kiba spoke up for her, waiting for her to realize that Naruto was stupid. For her to realize that he has been by her side since the beginning. After Hayashi died in the war, the elders proclaim Hanabi as the next year. It's okay if you didn't know. They didn't tell anyone about it. How, how could they, said Naruto. Well, it's simple then. I'm going to kick some elders' ass all the way to the monument, as that was unforgivable. But then Hinata snapped everything. It came rushing down on her. Now you care, she said. Her voice was still a whisper, but she still spoke. So I had to get branded. For you to care, she said. The anger in her voice shot the both of them. No, um, that's not, um, I get it, Naruto, she said. As she looked down, you don't like me. I just wish that you would tell me so I wouldn't believe that I had some kind of hope, she said. It, it was cruel. Um, I... I didn't talk to you, said Naruto, because I didn't know how I felt. I didn't want to make a mistake and do something bad and have you hate me. She looking directly in the eyes. Well, that's too late. Because I hate you, Naruto was a monkey. As she stomped off. Hinata, wait! Kiba got in his path. That's enough. I think you BAM! He was sent sail as he smashed through two trees and slammed into a rock. Not now, said Naruto. As Kiba's shoulder blade was cracked. Kiba might have lost the battle, but he won the war as far as he was concerned with Hinata. To finally show her that Naruto was not the person right for her, it was him. Hinata gasped as Naruto flashed in front of her. I'm sorry, he said. It's too late for that. You may be sorry all you want, but words cannot eat at the past, she said. She raised her head proudly. If he could be her seal, then so could she. They passed me over as ear. Not because I am weak. It's because Hanabi is younger and more impressionable. They knew I want to change things. And they would have kept me from doing just that. As she brushed her hair behind her head. I'm not ashamed of being sealed, she said. That's bullshit, said Naruto. Someone could have done something. Granny Snavi can do something. No one deserves to be sealed without their permission. It's clan politics, she said. The seal on her forehead then started to light up as she dropped to the ground. He caught her. Hinata, he said. I have to go. They're calling for me. She ran off in tears. As Naruto dropped down to the ground. Time skip, the tower. Snavi heard Naruto scream out her name. He wasn't even in the office yet. As Naruto burst inside and slammed his fist on the table. Granny Snavi, he said, we have to do something now. The Ayugas, they seal Hinata. Oh? You're just now learning about that. What? Th then why aren't you doing something, Naruto asked. Because my hands are tied. The truth of the matter is, it's clan politics and I cannot interfere. What are you talking about during the Hokage, said Naruto. Snavi sigh. Sit, she says, she pointed towards the chair. Naruto was too riled up to sit. Shizune. Bring me my board. In seconds, Shizune came in the whiteboard as she was rolling it in. Snavi stood up as she started to draw some strange pictures. There are three military power in Kanoha, the Daimyo, the Hokage, and the clan heads. What about the village elders, said Naruto? They act in advisory roles, but they do not really possess any real power, said Snavi. Let's say, for example, someone like Donsu had become the Hokage. My grandfather put in checks and balances that will mediate any destruction that is ruining my cause. The Hokage is entitled to the daimyo and largely rely on its economical climb. The clan heads are a benefit to prevent the Hokage from becoming a dictator. Because of this, they are guaranteed certain rights and powers. I can't simply go into your clan and tell them what to do. But, but, besides, she said, it's extremely difficult to argue with something that works. There is but one case where another country has to be a gun. Just one. That is impressive, given how long the Hayuga has been a clan. But they don't have to seal each other, do she has. Have those jutsu when they weren't putting seals on people's forehead. Naruto 
the witches are all dead, said Snappy. Nerd did not know how to respond to that, as he racked his brain for a way to respond to that. I don't think you understand what we ninjas are. We aren't peacekeepers. We aren't. Here to rid the world of evil. We're simply on the daimyo's paycheck. Without the daimyo, this village is nothing. If our daimyo is at peace to other nations, it can stay at peace. But the moment he tells us to go to war, we have to go to war. And there's nothing we can do to stop it. But that's... that's... As Nurt remembers Shikamaru words, we're slaves. How can we follow a daimyo who raised taxes so high that people starve, said Naruto. Snavi gave my soft smile. He raised the taxes so that he can support the reconstruction of Konoha. It wasn't just Konoha that was crippled in pain invasion, but daimyo as well. When his main military power, which is us, is weakened, so is he. He raised taxes to get us back on our feet. There's got to be something, said Naruto. I'm afraid it's beyond the power of Hokage. But the Hokage is supposed to fix everything. You're supposed to make everything right, said Naruto. I can only do so much, Naruto, she said. Then, what's the point of being Hokage, he said. What's the goddamn point if you can't stop people from starving? Or keep people from being sealed against their own will? Naruto, calm down. No, he says he slammed. Both his hands on the table. I can't. His face looked broken. What's the point? What's the point? The point is to protect Kanoha citizens. And the will of fire, she said. What's the point of even being Hokage anymore, said Naruto as he calmed down. I don't think I want the job anymore. She got up and poked him in the chest. Stop being a little punk, she said. Do you think I wanted this job? You're the one who practically gave it to me. It's not easy, but it doesn't mean you have to bitch about it. It doesn't matter. I don't want it, he said. As he made his way off through the window, Snevi sat down. As she can't understand when did his dreams. When did his dream that he had become nightmare? But guys, be in subscribe right here. If you want the next person to do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on the bell notifications they posted. Remember to share all of your friends and social media platform. And also, guys, go ahead and check out the brand new episode over in the making three of What If Naruto had the deadliest bloodline and enjoy that, guys. And also, over in the making two, I post a brand new episode of What If Naruto's Abandoned and Awaken a Keki Genkai. So go ahead and enjoy that as well. And remember if you're new and this is the first time you hear my voice, go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become part of the making family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be playing talking about to all of you. So yeah, without further ado, what do you say we get the hell out of here? See you guys soon. Peace.